Okay, first of all, I understand that there's craziness happening all over the country and all over the world. It's not location dependent, but it is human dependent because people, we're emotional creatures. And sometimes we do things that are counter to our best interest. So saying that, there's been some outrageous behavior taking place with certain federal employees in the government, starting off with the government publishing office, which is right here in Washington, DC. This is a small agency. It has less than 2000 federal employees, but they had to fire a few people recently. And it's because of harassment, not just any harassment, but racist remarks displaying explicit images and other toxic behavior. This also included having sexual statues on people's desk and making lewd remarks to your coworker. Now this, this type of activity, it was reported not once, not twice, multiple times. And every time that it was reported, the agency failed to take any action. And there's a good reason for this. The reason is the person that they reported it to, he was a toxic individual as well. He was saying racist remarks as well. Well, he was fired. He left the agency, new boss comes in. So you think, that he would clear things up, right? Get the organization moving in the right direction, right? No, he was the exact same way. So we had two supervisors back to back trying to cover this up, trying to encourage employees not to report this to the EEOC, which is the Equal Employer Opportunity Commission. They didn't want any light coming to this issue. What these employees were saying and doing, it's horrible, it's alarming. But what is even more alarming is that leadership failed them. So it's one thing when the employee does it wrong, right? You have infractions at the low level, but if your leadership is not protecting and doing the right thing for that organization, what are we doing? Some of the things that were said in this report, it's just too outrageous for me to mention here. So I'm gonna leave a link to the article down below. If you wanna read exactly what was said in the office, you can check that out. Workplace harassment, it's nothing new. I knew a story of this lady who was a human resource officer. And let's just say she was a close talker. So if she had something to say to you, she didn't care about your personal space or your bubble. She just went right in there a good three or four inches from your nose and she would just start speaking her mind. Where a lot of people didn't like this. A lot of people told her, hey, respect my bubble. Do not come in too close. Now, aside from this, she had a temper, right? A little erratic. I think this was like a GS-13, GS-14 type individual. Well, after a couple of years of complaints, they decided to do something about this. The agency decided to terminate her. And with that termination, there's an option in certain federal agencies where you can call the Department of Homeland Security. You can have the police from DHS come in and assist you. If you have like an unruly employee, two options. One option, DHS is outside your building. The other option is they come in and they escort the troubled employee out the door. Well, the agency decided to just have DHS on the outside, so it wouldn't be that big of a deal. So the lady is informed, hey, you know, this is your last day. Here's your, your cardboard box. Start picking up your belongings and have a nice day. She's going down the elevator and she sees the police car across the street from DHS. She sees that and she flips her lid. She thinks she's being arrested. So she gets crazy <laughs> irrational goes back up the elevator, says she's not leaving her desk. What ended up happening, the police officers had to come back into the agency and escort her physically off the premises. That is how crazy you can get sometimes. There was another situation at the USDA, Supervisor's GS-14. He is constantly making these remarks to his employees, saying things like, you know, you remind me of my wife. Like, um, hey, do you have another job? It seems like you have another job. You're not getting these tasks done. You have to let me know if you have another job. You know, badgering comments like that, saying things that were insinuating that the employee was lying. Just overall kind of a toxic individual. But in this case, there's nothing you can really report. There's no there's no serious repercussions. This is kind of like um, uh, <laughs> a negative leadership style. I mean, there's certain remarks you can't say, but this individual didn't get in trouble. And if you find yourself with a supervisor like this, because supervisors, you know, they range in a lot of different personalities. You never know exactly what you're gonna get. 
If you have a supervisor that's starting to exhibit these toxic behaviors, the best thing you can do is start looking for another job. Now, if they cross the line, sure, report it to EEOC, report it to your supervisor, supervisor. But I tell you what, a lot of times it's better to leave that environment. If we look at the EEOC annual report, there are thousands of complaints by federal employees every year. This is for both harassment and discrimination. Obviously, this is not just limited to federal employment. When I was in the military, people were getting into fights in the parking lot, in the company headquarter building. People were always getting into fights, harassment, racial slurs, the whole thing, right? No place is completely immune. This is a government executive story. And I think it's important that when people go into the federal government, especially if this is your first government job, to go in with eyes wide open. Uh, a lot of people look at being a federal government employee as something being very professional, um, super conservative, very uh, proper, for lack of a better term. But a lot of times you get in there and what you see on the inside is completely outside of what your expectations were. So you can see people uh, dis displaying childlike behavior, people not coming to work on time, people saying things they really shouldn't be saying. So just understand, when you get into that agency, I would say expect the unexpected. If you are still interested in a federal government job, when it comes to remote work and telework, there's some new rules, some new guidelines that pass through Congress that could impact everybody to include yourself. And if you're interested in that, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.